Welcome back guys. As I prepare for my next showcase video on the Crown Knights, I thought to document and give you guys a quick rundown of my design, printing, and post-processing steps. As I've mentioned in the past, I use a program called Rhino 3D to do my modeling work. I only use it because it's what I use for my day job, so I'm just familiar with it. But there are plenty of other tools I'd use otherwise, like Blender or SketchUp. Honestly, whatever feels most intuitive for you is probably the one you should use. So this piece I'm working on today is a very simple breastplate that shares similar characteristics to the Lion Knight armor I showed in the last episode. But you can see that I start by reusing parts from my old models, and a reference image for the faction sigil. And since these details are very tiny, I wouldn't worry too much on getting the curved lines exact, which you'll see later on. I really liked giving this relief-like effect on my customs because it gives the armor some added depth, and the shadows it creates look nice in photos. So you'll eventually save the model as an STL file, which will let you import it into a slicer software such as Chitubox. Now this is a step that I still need to optimize, but the gist is to angle your pieces in a way that allows minimal surface area that is in contact with the FEP sheet. And I'm just printing a couple of additional pieces here as a test. These are some prints that have the highest failure rate for me so far. So after an initial dunk in 91% IPA to wash the layer of uncured resin, I'll begin my first round of inspections to immediately remove the prints that I deem irreparable. For example, this handle on the shield is distorted, or the significant layer shift you see with this chest piece. So if I had to take a guess, the print angle and the placement of the supports were off on the shield, and the layer shift for the breastplate was probably caused by someone shaking the printer when they walked past it or something. Either way, both issues are preventable, so I'm not too worried. After removing the supports, the pieces go back into the IPA for a last rinse before getting fully cured with a UV light source. And yes, I'm still using my girlfriend's nail light. After it's cured, which takes a matter of a few minutes since the pieces are tiny, they go through a final step of the post-production process where I trim and sand off any blemishes. With resin printing, it's never going to be as consistent as injection molding, especially in a home setup like this. One time, a piece can fit perfectly on a fig, the next batch may be a little too loose. You sort of have to roll with the punches and determine which pieces are still usable and which need to get scrapped. But of course, you can avoid all of these previous steps if you'd like to buy these pieces directly off of my new store. So due to popular demand, I spent the past week focusing solely on opening the shop. And like you know, I have a full-time job outside of this, so this store will not be able to pump out prints like a factory. But on the flip side, each print I produce will be made to order and will receive a thorough QC before arriving at your doorstep. And as a little thank you to everyone supporting this channel, here's a code you can use for a small discount, which will be active throughout the weekend. So with the Crown Knights, you might be able to get away without having to paint anything because the resin color kind of works with their faction theme. But if you ever want to personalize your prints, here are some key items I personally use to achieve the final products you see in my videos and photos, and I'll post the links in the descriptions below. The spray can is best to apply a base color, and the acrylic paints can help you achieve some finer details. And really, how much you paint or don't paint is really up to you guys. I usually follow a max 3 color per piece rule, to keep my designs from getting too detailed. So this is how you go from a standard Lego minifig, which already looks great by the way, to something a little more sophisticated, and could potentially add a touch of character and flavor to your castle display. And of course guys, the Crown Knight showcase that I teased in the previous video is still in the works. Just please understand that with running a shop, I do have to split my time between all these other efforts, but your patience is appreciated. So I hope this video gave you guys a little bit of a better idea of how I personally produce my custom accessories. And of course, if you have any other questions, please just post them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.